Jacques-Louis David was born in 1748 in Paris and died in 1825 in Brussels in exile. The late 1700s in France were tumultuous, to say the least, and it wasn't enough for David to focus solely on his painting. The artist seemed omnipresent in other roles that ranged from painter and designer to the revolution, provocateur, political organizer, and eventually as elected delegate to the National Convention. At age 18, David was admitted to the Royal Academy in France in what is now the Louvre. There he studied with Joseph-Marie Vienne, who greatly influenced his work. The revolutionary spirit was alive within the academy, where in 1792, David was at the center of efforts to abolish the academy, which was quickly replaced with the Institut National. Ultimately, it was a determination to change its political composition rather than quarrels about the fundamentals of purpose that drove the change. Commissioned by King Louis XVI of France, David's Oath of Horatii, completed in 1784, is emblematic of the artist's neoclassical depictions of heroism to unify the populace, in this instance, behind the French monarchy. As Grigsby notes, the painting also points to David's stylistic movement toward a greater classical Greek purism. In this magnificent work, we see the clarity and precision of a history painting designed to uplift morals and provide morality instruction. His technique is characterized by a bare bones approach to composition and structure and the dematerialization of the paint with no visible brush strokes. In 1796, David said to his students, I want to work in a pure Greek style. I feed my eyes on antique statues. I even have the intention of imitating some of them. The Greeks had no scruples about copying a composition, a gesture, a type that had already been accepted and used. They put all their attention and all their art on perfecting an idea that had been already conceived. They thought, and they were right, that in the arts, the way in which an idea is rendered and the manner in which it is expressed is much more important than the idea itself. David's The Lictors Bring to Brutus the Bodies of His Sons, painted in 1789, is full of symbology and revolutionary subject matter, basically reinforcing notions of morality and patriotic sacrifice, but also foreshadowing the violence of the revolution. The composition depicts the patriotic sacrifice of family for the public good. The tenebrism adds drama to the highly fractured groupings of individuals. The red linen alludes to the violence of the revolution and the guillotine. The pared down composition of Marat at his last breath or death of Marat painted in 1793 rendered with clarity and precision, gave viewers a sense of authenticity, which supplied the perfect elements of propaganda the revolutionaries so desperately needed. This image depicts Jean-Paul Marat, an anti-royalist revolutionary, whose body was also publicly displayed as a martyr. 
the male nude under duress, reflects a prevalent neoclassical narrative in this portrayal of the beauty of martyrdom, which scholars say is the best painting of the revolution. Napoleon Crossing the Alps, painted in 1800 and 1801, demonstrates David's alignment with the new emperor. As Mulhall notes, the work serves to remove Napoleon from the world of ordinary men. Commissioned by Napoleon, shortly after David became court painter, this painting is an excellent example of art as visual propaganda. The horse with the crazed eyes contrasts with Napoleon's elegance and calm. The emperor's direct gaze is a metaphor for leading France. David's life was a tale of near misses and close calls. He escaped execution and the wrath of successive regimes for decades, but finally exiled himself to Brussels rather than accept the offer to be court painter under the newly restored Bourbon King, Louis XVIII. There, he completed his last major work, Mars being disarmed by Venus in 1824, in a style that did not fully embrace the tenets of Romanticism movement emerging at the time.